a lot more people in here than I thought it would be. I guess you guys want to see Open Sack in production, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, so I'm Robbie Williamson. I'm the uh, Vice President of core, uh, Cloud Development and Operations at Canonical. What the hell does that mean? I'll get to that in a minute. Um, um, here to basically just talk about how we use OpenStack uh, in production as in within Canonical to support both uh, the internal services across the company globally as well as uh, the Ubuntu project itself. Um, we uh, had a mission, I guess, a few years back to really kind of practice what we preach and this is kind of just the just a high level overview of what we went through. It's kind of an evolving talk. I found that a lot of people don't know or didn't know that we actually use this stuff internally um, and that they are probably using it as well if they're uh, using any of the newer uh, Ubuntu releases. And I also cover that. And, uh, they, and, and, and I think that plays really well into our story of how we you know, develop and integrate OpenStack into Ubuntu and provide services uh, to deploy and manage Ubuntu is because we have to do it ourselves. I, I force my IS team to do it um, and they hate me. <laughs> um, really quickly about Canonical, look, we're global. These are our big offices. We have a small office in the Isle of Man where a certain person lives. It's a very big, important office, but <laughs> um, it's established in 2004. We have over 500 people, close to 600, and the mission is to bring Ubuntu to the world across uh, a multitude of devices, uh, including the cloud. Uh, right now, we have a close partnership with Amazon Web Services, HP Cloud, Rackspace, uh, Microsoft Azure, believe it or not, um, and of course, we work on across a wide range of flavors of OpenStack. Important note, we've been doing cloud for a while, 2008. I joined the company in 2008, previously at IBM, Linux Technology Center for about 10 years. Um, at that time, my first UDS, I don't know if you, any of you have ever been to OpenStack, I mean, Ubuntu Developer Summit, UDS, much of the same format as this, uh, smaller now, virtual now. Um, and I remember we were in Mountain View and the entire server team at the time of, it was very small, read by, led by Rick Clark, one of the founding members of OpenStack. Um, they were all huddled in this room. I was like, what the hell are those guys doing off in this room? I thought, you know, we're supposed to be doing this UDS. Or, oh, no, we're doing this, this, you know, we're looking at private cloud. I was like, private cloud, get out of here. You know, I heard that at IBM forever. Um, it's like, no, you know, that, that's just BS. And they, no, 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 there's this company, there's this university we were talking to. Um, they got this thing called eucalyptus. We don't know, we're looking at it. Um, and, you know, a few months later, six months later, we were, you know, producing a eucalyptus installer. Now, look, it wasn't top notch, it was eucalyptus. I'm not going to even mess with that and go to that area. But um, ever since then, we've been focused on cloud um, scale out. It, 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 you know, from a server perspective, that was when, like, Ubuntu Server really became something more than just, you know, Debian at a cadence. <laughs> um, uh, and, the, and the company and as a whole and Canonical really split into really a, a client and a server focus. Um, and so I try to remind that when people talk to us, you know, about, you know, cloud and, you know, you hear I mean, a lot of other vendors are coming on with cloud. Look, it's not a buzzword for us. It's our business. We've been doing it for a long time. Um, and it's ingrained in how we approach our engineering, how we approach our deployment, and, um, and how we even choose the features that we, we focus on. Um, so, 2011, <coughs> roughly, maybe 2010, it, it kind of blurred together. Um, it was really a put forward, can we really practice what we preach? Um, you know, can we transition our traditional you know, IT infrastructure to a really cloud-centric workflow across the entire business? Um, uh, you know, running finance systems where we can on it and so forth. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not all there yet. Um, but, um, you know, we made a lot of good progress. Uh, another question was, you know, support both, not just canonical in, uh, you know, infrastructure, uh, but Ubuntu project. You know, there's a lot of websites at the .ubuntu.com domain, um, from just your, you know, traditional web to the archives to uh, errors.ubuntu.com, which tracks, you know, bugs and does like basically a heat map of where the, the high hitting errors are in the current releases, uh, to launchpad.canonical.com. There's a landscape. I mean, there's a lot of different services that are hosted uh, between Ubuntu and Canonical. Can we move those as well over to the cloud? And um, move internally from a traditional, like, you know, the IS department is just some guys we open a bunch of RT tickets against and, you know, curse at, and development is a bunch of idiots who don't know how to deploy things into production, to like a real proper team, a real merged team. Um, can we do that as well? Uh, 
And so the answer, yes, we can. <laughs> but it was damn hard. And that's a picture of Mark Shuttleworth playing in his garage with uh, some servers in mass. He, I love this picture because it, it really shows like who he really is deep down. Like, like yeah, he's just the owner of the company. He's keenly smart and visionary, but he loves this stuff. He gets into it and drives it. And yeah, he was basically deploying some some servers in his garage, and we have that. That's called their garage lab, and you can actually check that out uh, remotely and use it. Um, but there's a lot of different expectations and different things we had to meet, right? There's organizational expectations. There's uh, the heterogeneous hardware that we had in, in the sense that there's, there's hardware all over, different types of hardware. It's not like you just you know, point a wand at it and all of a sudden it's a cloud. Um, and then there's software decisions that we had to make. Um, and I kind of just going to go through these high level areas. I mean, there's other things that we had to do in terms of like processes, how developers interact with IS when you have a whole DevOps formation. But I, I really want to cover these three right now. Um, so. Organizational expectations, management. So management wants to know, well, how much faster will we be? How much more efficient? Efficient means always how much you know, money can we save? You're not going to save a lot of money, first of all, when you go to cloud initially. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, uh, you know, first of all, unless you have a lot of spare hardware just laying around, um, you're going to, you can't, or, or you can afford to just bring entire IS down for weeks. <laughs> uh, we couldn't do either. So you have to buy additional hardware. And that's the first thing they freak out about. I said, what the hell do you mean, buy extra hardware? I thought we're cloud. We're pooling this stuff together. I said, yeah, I can't, I, you can't pool things together before, without, without, you know, unless you want me to shut down Ubuntu.com. Oh, OK, 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 OK. And how efficient will we be? You know, and that means we'll have a cloud. That means we can scale to meet demand automatically. You know, if we happen to do, I don't know, maybe a countdown to send the entire world to my website at the same second to announce a phone, <coughs> can it stay up? Well, yeah, I mean, the cloud can scale, scale but it's a software wouldn't to scale as well. I don't know. Our web team, you know, it, it's, there's a lot of assumptions built in. Yeah, you can scale compute and storage and network all you want, but if the actual code isn't built that way, it doesn't matter. Um, developers want to know, well, man, that means we can deploy, test, develop, and production fast. Now, no more opening RTs. I can get whatever I want live right away. No, you can't. I mean, listen. <laughs> This is a production level thing. You, we, 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 there's IS, I, you know, we still have to have you know, protections in place. We can't have you running rogue DNSs. I got an email today that someone had deployed uh, a rogue DNS uh, in one of our clouds, and that cloud was open to the public. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yes, you're going to have a lot more freedom, but there's still going to be controls. There's, there's certain things you're still going to have to wait on. And, and I think some people think there's going to be the, you know, well, you know, it's a cloud. They can just you know, box it off and no. It doesn't work that easy. Um, in operations, Jesus, what do you mean we're going to a cloud? How can we do our jobs? How can we track who's using what? How can we, you know, you're going to give developers access to deploy their own services? Are you kidding me? Uh, um, uh, you know, how, how, what are we going to do? And so there was, uh, I said, look, calm down. You know, it's, it's we're, we're first of all, we're going to do it internally, then we'll move externally. We'll, we'll, we'll learn from our mistakes early, and then, you know, hopefully correct them when we move externally. Um, and we'll take baby steps. It's not going to be all at once. It, it'll, it'll be okay. Um, and so there's a, there's a lot of to, you know, to deal with all these different areas. Um, one of the ways we did it was reorganize things. So <laughs> underneath me, you'll see typical engineering solutions, yada, yada, yada. And then you see infrastructure systems, right? IS. So within Canonical, all these teams, these are all peers. They all have various levels of, I mean, we have obviously some teams are bigger than others. Um, but they're all peers. So if I have my Juju manager saying, oh, man, that works. You can do deploy this, this, this. No problem. You can scale. No problem. My infrastructure guy would say, no, that's, that's bullshit. Probably. You know, I just tried it. didn't work. And so you know, there's a lot of calling back and forth. I mean, we are proper DevOps in the most dysfunctional way in terms of like a family of just arguing all the time. But it's good in the sense that we call each other out. I mean, we're friends, but it, 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 it keeps you honest, right? Um, and IS, it, it goes both ways. When IS says, oh, no, that'll take forever. You know, maybe the guy, you know, my Ubuntu server guy said, no, 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 no. Mass will help you do that. Just do this and this and that. Oh, OK, OK, OK. Um, another cool thing is when IS is underneath you, you get your tickets handled a lot faster. But um, <laughs> so uh, you know, outside of my organization, we have you know, online services, which is your Ubuntu One uh, services, which is primarily, honestly, hosted a lot uh, back ended on the cloud in terms of Amazon Cloud, because it's a lot larger of a service that serves people. Um, we have uh, Ubuntu Engineering, which does a lot of the client side and the core of Ubuntu as well, um, and the phone. 
uh, we have, uh, and then your traditional things like uh, uh, OEM relations, uh, operations, legal, all those types of things. Uh, those are all outside of my organization, obviously, but they all depend on IS systems in one way or another. Um, heterogeneous hardware. Um, so we have different vendors, different architectures in our lab. Um, and OpenStack didn't really work right off the bat with all of them. I mean, it, you know, they, I think there was a talk earlier where they talked about different IPMIs, how some vendors like to tweak it this way, tweak it that way, or they like to change something. And when you want to just pool it all in one simple, simple, you know, pool of machines for a cloud, it's not as straightforward as you might think. And so you, when you're trying to explain this to folks who maybe don't understand, they get a little frustrated and say, well, we have all this damn hardware. What do you mean you can only put half of it in there? Well, because there's, you know, some of it's ARM. We can't put a bunch of panda boards in there. It doesn't work the way we want it to do. <laughs> um, or some of it's, uh, uh, you know, different capacities. So uh, not so much processing speed, which does make a difference. I mean, uh, but there's also storage. I mean, some of it's, uh, depending on what it is. Like, if, if we need it, we have some that are SAN. Some's on, the SANs are backed up on SSD. Some, SS, some SANs are backed up on rotary disk. I mean, depending on how fast you need that data uh, for the given service, you know, it depends on where we put the data. And then when you have a cloud, okay, so now I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put the storage. And I can't just pull it all together because it's all different types of hardware underneath. Um, networking, just the fact that, I mean, some of the machines have, you know, a lot of cards, some don't. I mean, it, that, that comes, quantum helped us a lot towards the end on that one. Um, but it is a consideration. And then finally, this is, hell, locations. Um, our primary data centers are in Boston, in London, but we, ha um, but we have another one growing in Taipei, and I'm like, we have one in the garage now, man. Um, um, how, how do you pull that together? We want one big cloud. What, what do you mean one big cloud? I mean, I'm already paying for a huge pipe between Boston and, and London. I get yelled at every year when people ask me, why are we paying so much money for this? What the hell is this thing for? It's like, so your data centers can talk fast. Um, but can you make that one big cloud? Can you make it a heterogeneous cloud where, uh, you know, one, one cloud, you know, to the user, but underneath it's two. How do we do that? Um, uh, and then you talk about China. Whew, I mean, uh, we're looking at expanding to China. I don't know if you saw the news there, and there's a lot of different challenges in terms of IT in terms when you're working with China. Um, you know, just try to use Google when you get there. Um, so, <laughs> amazingly, side note, you can use Skype. Um, now, I'm not going to say that that conversation is going to be private, but, you know, if it's a public, if, if you're talking about a rolling release or something like that, hey, fire it up, they may want to know. But it, it, I find that interesting. Skype worked like a charm. Hangouts, not so much. Um, one of the tools we use, and ironically, this is recent, is Landscape, <laughs> which is a product that we've, been use, that we've been pushing out for a while now. But just like any other IS team, they get crudgy, they get, they like, they get comfortable with their own tools, they never want to change. Um, well, we kind of said, look, get your shit into Landscape. And while that's good, because if you have a lot of machines running Ubuntu, Landscape is pretty damn good at managing it. I mean, it, you can manage your, your upgrades, it, it alerts you, it lets you know capacity, it, it can even tell you when you're about to run out of memory or storage on certain machines. It notifies, it, it's, it's a really good tool for managing Ubuntu. Use it, so now we use it. Um, we have about, uh, that says 522 machines, give or take. I mean, there's some mixture around there with, with virtualization and Zen machines as well. Um, but we leverage that. And later on, I can talk to you about how we're taking landscape to and leveraging and expanding landscape to, to allow us to do more things within a production level cloud. Um, moving on here. Ah, software decisions. So which cloud platform do we use? This was the early question. This is when it first got proposed. You know, Eucalyptus, CloudStack, OpenStack. Yeah, right. So it was really came down to which OpenStack do we use? Um, Essex, Folsom, Grizzly. Well, we started out with Essex because that's when that was available. But a lot of the conversation around this and conversation with our cloud partners at the time is why there is the Ubuntu Cloud Archive. It, it became very clear. It's like, well, look, this stuff's moving too fast right now to just say, stick on the LTS and you'll love Essex for five years. It's not going to happen. Um, so uh, you know, that's when we came out with the Cloud Archive, which is a supported archive. You, you can overlay on top of LTS and support uh, uh, run newer versions of OpenStack. Uh, Grizzly's already in there. Actually came out, I think Chuck Short had the packages up and ready and running maybe in a week of the release of Grizzly. Um, 
And of course, Grizzly will be in uh, 1304 when it comes out um, next week, I believe. Um, so, I mean, right now, I think a lot of our clouds are running Folsom, actually. And uh, with Grizzly coming out, we will be looking at which ones to upgrade, uh, which ones we're going to wait on. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that as well, how we do that. How do we manage the hardware pool? So, you know, how, how you, not all of our machines went to the cloud. We have certain machines that we don't need in the cloud. You know, some are just storage. You know, some are archive.ubuntu.com that we really don't need that in the cloud. We just need it over here and get it near to, to our memory. Um, but the, the, the machines that we have, you know, how can we easily pull them out? How can we easily install and upgrade at, at, at mass? Because we don't want to, that's a, Words. Um, but how can we do it all at once? Like, how can we make it easy to be able to slide these machines in and out? What tools are we going to use? Are we going to use Cobbler? Are we going to use this FAE? I mean, what the hell? I mean, these are, these, are these are decisions and discussions that we had actively internally um, and kind of drove some of the decisions and things that we did uh, in, our, in, our, in our product. Um, how do we manage the cloud? You know, managing access, tracking zones, measuring resources. Now, we don't do, you know, in bigger companies, you have all that internal billing. I remember when I was at IBM, I used to drive me crazy that I had to, like, we had to pay all this money to some internal team to protect the firewall from an internal lab, and they could claim that as profit when it was all like blue dollars, drive me crazy. <laughs> we don't do that. But it's still useful to know who's sucking up all your resources in the cloud. <laughs> you know, is, is, you know, are my online services guys doing some development sucking up all the CPU, or is, you know, I mean, so how do you track that right now? And, and, and that kind of, and that, those discussions early on kind of led to the whole Solometer project. Nick Barce at the time was at the company, and there was a lot of discussion about resources and metering, and you know eventually billing. But metering was a real key. I mean, there's always going to be you know billing gets really complicated, but you know we want to be able to track that. Yes, you can track uh, resources of the hardware itself, but also who's using it, how much they're using, you know, are they abusing the, their free privilege of using this cloud uh, in terms of our company? And finally, how do we manage the services in the cloud? Um, how do we deploy them? How do we manage them? How do we scale them? Um, uh, we had been thinking about this problem whew, for, was it 2003? Since 2010, when we were just looking at the cloud in general, in terms of, you know, you're going from hundreds of machines, hundreds of instances to, well, hundreds of machines to thousands of instances. You can't scale your IT department that way. It's, it's inefficient. Um, how do you approach uh, management of services that way? Um, and so from that, before I get there, just one small clarification. <laughs> and I just added this slide in because it drives me crazy when people think configuration management and service orchestration the same way. So configuration management, is, I think of it like the old remote, universal remote where, you know, I can control my TV, I can control my satellite, I can control the stereo, you know, I push one button, turn it on, it's all pre-programmed, it's, it's pretty easy, but I still have to like do it in the right order and make sure I don't screw it up, I'd start all over, you know, my mom could never figure it out. Service orchestration takes a higher level. It's all about what you really want to do at the end. It's like the new one. I just want to watch TV. So I hit watch TV, the TV turns on, the cable box turns on, it switches to the right, it does it automatically. I don't have to, I don't care. I just want to watch TV. I don't want to fiddle with all the detail. I'll play a game, so forth. That's what we, the difference I, I see in, in, in the sense of configuration management versus service orchestration. I would claim this is my, my own example, but I stole this from one of my managers, Mark Ram. I'm giving credit right now. Um, <laughs> So moving forward, uh, these are some of the softwares that, that we decided on. Obviously, OpenStack, duh, easy decision. Ubuntu, come on. Um, uh, the other three, we, Mass wasn't the first choice. You know, we were looking hard at Cobbler um, for our to for for you know managing software, um, but the project started kind of tailing off a little bit. I think Red Hat moved to to a new project. I can't remember what it was. Um, and then our security teams are looking into it, and they, it kind of, they, they kind of freaked out. And the bugs are out there; you can look at them. And 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 so it's like, okay, look, we don't need. And the cobbler was a little heavier than what we needed. It had a lot of other cool functions that we just didn't need. We just needed something to be able to pixie boot machines, deploy it, and, and and track them, and maybe do a couple things like firmware updates, and um, and, uh, uh, and and inventory management. So uh, we we just started with Mass, and Mass originally was wrapped around cobbler. I mean as of maybe a couple of releases ago, um, because it was a great start. But then we removed Cobbler and, and kind of put in our own stuff. And it does the same basic things, Pixie Boot. Uh, you can do DHCP, DNS, but it's just, a, it's just metal as a service. It's a way of controlling 
hardware at scale. You don't have to use Juju or anything else. If you just want to deploy a bunch of Ubuntu servers, you use Mass. Landscape uses Mass when you're uh, remotely managing machines. It's just a conduit into managing machines. Um, landscape, obviously, we started looking at in terms of managing the hardware, and now we've started expanding upon that in terms of how can Landscape manage your cloud, and I'll get into that later, but there's a lot of cool stuff that Buffett has available on that. Uh, and then Juju, our service orchestration tool, basically supports various backends. Um, we started out with EC2, Amazon, uh, then we quickly moved to OpenStack. Uh, now we have a, what we call a local provider, which allows you to do dev test deploy on your, on your laptop, um, and uh, as well as Mass, which is our bare metal backend provider. Um, you, it's, Juju's very pluggable in the back end, so it, it, we, we can write those in various different ways, such as you can deploy services. Um, to us, OpenStack is, you know, no offense, it's no different than any other service. Hadoop, uh, hell, WordPress, MySQL, they're all just services to us. So whether or not we deploy them on bare metal or we deploy them in the cloud, it, it's the same. So we use the same tooling. It wasn't that we were, you know, so that why did we use Juju and Mass to deploy OpenStack? It's because we used Juju to deploy services and uh, we deployed services on bare metal with Mass. We can deploy Ceph storage onto bare metal using Juju and Mass. We can deploy Hadoop onto bare metal using Juju and Mass. We can deploy Hadoop into the cloud using Juju and Mass. So we use those tools because they work for us and they cover more than just, we have to do more than just the cloud. The cloud is very important, but we have to do other services as well. Um, so a lot of people you know, kind of ask us why we chose those. It's because our focus is on, on the services, not, not one specific service. So Canonistack was born. Uh, it's an internal cloud uh, that we use. There is no uh, SLA on this thing. It can go down <laughs> two minutes from now. I mean, it, it, it's really just for our own. <laughs> we encourage our developers to use it uh, to deploy services. It has external IPs. Someone deployed a DNS on that recently, so now we're blocking certain ports. Um, <laughs> we, our, our developers can use it to prototype services. They can use it to prototype uh, you know, surveys, websites, um, errors.ubuntu.com was originally prototyped on there. Um, and it's pretty, it's pretty nice. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not always up, right? I, you know, some, you know we're, we're always playing with bits. We're always testing new things out because that was the original intent of it, and we kept it that way. Um, it has uh, you know, two regions, so we can always upgrade one before we upgrade another. Um, and you know, it's not huge, uh, but it, it, it's, it does enough, and, and it suits our needs for, for what we use it for. Again, it's mostly dev and test. Um, after Kanata Stack was up for a while, and we were comfortable with it, and I think maybe Folsom had released, um, we made Prod Stack. So Prod Stack is up and running just as of 1210. Um, and uh, it's 1204 LTS, running Folsom from our cloud archive. There's a detail up there. It's running a number of services now. Uh, Errors.abuti.com is a service, again, that tracks uh, bugs in the background in terms of how many, the heat at which they're filed, so we can get a better sense of, you know, where we need to focus our development, on the, mostly on the client. Um, if you've ever looked on the recent uh, Ubuntu installation and wonder what the hell Whoopsie Daisy was, Whoopsie Daisy is collecting that data and sending it there. It's anonymized, we don't care who you are, we just care about the, the, the bug. Um, certification website. So, if you want to certify your hardware or look up to see if hardware is certified, that service is hosted on our cloud. And product search, which everyone loves, I know. Amazon search on your, web, on your desktop. Um, so when we first released the product search, it was wide open. You could type something on there, and you might get some crazy sh stuff <laughs> from Amazon.com. So we had to put some filters in place. We, uh, you know, we, so now, you know, every time you run a search uh, through the product search, it hits our filters. We don't, we anonymize, we don't care who you are, but we wanna make sure you don't get back things that you really don't, shouldn't be getting in terms of just wide open, you know, anyone can use your desktop, it could be kind of embarrassing. Um, so that, 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 that's run now. So those three services, uh, plus some back-end <laughs> CSS stuff uh, on our website are currently running right now in our prod stack, which is OpenStack based. Um, moving forward, we have some plans to put more services on there. Music search, video search, and again, this, those are just filters to keep, to make sure that the appropriate data is getting sent back. It's not a, you know, like, like again, we're not tracking people. I know people are always freaked out about that. We don't, 
we don't want to track that. If we want to track it, we just track all your downloads from archive.vim.com or whatever. I mean, it's mirrored, but we can track that from security. Come on, people. Um, full Ubuntu.com, so we want the full website there. I mean, again, a lot of the back end is there. We can scale a, a bit to meet demands. I mean, we, we, we have a pretty important release coming up next week. We'll see what happens. Um, we've got to test it with the phone and tablet announcements, and any of you went to there on the day, you, you, you know that our test, uh, I, I won't say we got an A on that, but it, we recovered really quickly. Um, a lot of that goes back to the web developers not designing for scale, not necessarily the compute storage and networking. Obviously, it's easy for me to point the finger when I know I don't manage those guys, but that's just a fact. Um, <laughs> and um, <laughs> Launchpad PPA builders, eventually we want to move those into the cloud. And that would be pretty cool. I mean, we, we do a lot of virtualization on the ARM side. Um, ideally, we want to move to real hardware on that, hopefully uh, later this year. Um, but uh, that'll be a pretty big test. Maybe even Launchpad running in the cloud. I don't know. It's pretty pretty hairy beast. and. I would like to keep the ability to create and make Ubuntu alive and well. Um, some other things we're doing. So right now, our data, if you saw in the previous slides, our, um, our clouds are deployed in, in single data centers, which, look, they're, they're big data centers. A lot of other big companies are in there. I mean, I'm not too afraid, but still, it's not the best redundancy method, and we don't really, and, we're, and, and we like to stay up. So uh, we want cross-environment deployment, so that means I can have OpenStack deployed in my London data center, OpenStack deployed in my Boston data center. It's the same cloud, you never know the difference. Um, and that depends on some of our tooling as well. Um, so it's, it's, really, it's not just a, it's not really an OpenStack problem. I mean, there's certain services that, that could be a little better at that, but it's also some of our own that we need to solve in the, in the coming months. Um, HA plus one, right now our cloud isn't even HA. Yay. But <laughs> um, we spent the last six months, six, eight months working on uh, the ability to deploy OpenStack in an HA, HA plus one. Why do you say HA plus one? That means you can always upgrade your machine, your, your servers, and still stay in HA. Um, so it's three machines per service. Uh, we can do that now. Um, live host machine upgrades. Can we upgrade the cloud without bringing it down? It's one thing to be able to say, hey, Canonstat's gonna be down you know, over the weekend, sorry. Can't tell you that Ubuntu.com's gonna be down over the weekend. So how do we upgrade the cloud, not just the OpenStack release, but the kernel updates. How do we do that and keep the cloud up? Um, how do you manage that, that upgrade uh, across the entire cloud? Working on that solution, we have it down and working now. Chaos Monkey and Mayhem Badger. Chaos Monkey, you've all heard, right? Netflix, um, who ironically is moving to Ubuntu. Um, they have a demon that goes around just killing random services, right? And see if they change and respond. Um, Mayhem Badger, I called that, is where we just go around and just start unplugging random machines to see if the cloud responds. <laughs> um, that's the test for HA plus one. It's, 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 been, it's been a directive that we have to make sure that we can really deploy these production level clouds. I mean, look, you know, it's, it's just as Ubuntu.com, we're not like you know, a telco, but we are talking to telcos, we do business with telcos, these are the things that they need to be able to depend on. Um, so all these things, to be honest with you, are either in deployment or or now, so tomorrow there's a keynote and Mark will be up there doing a yet another demo that stresses me out. Um, <laughs> I highly urge you to attend. Um, it's, and I can say, you know, given the past, I guess this is our fourth time doing this, I've been involved at various levels from, on every single one from packing up HP microservers to flashing disks to pushing servers up a ramp. Um, <laughs> Um, this is a really good one, and we, we, we're, we're really able to show what a real production cloud looks like. Um, ideally, we wanted to have 30-something machines on stage, but we're using um, just two with virtual machines because we only have about 15 to 20 minutes, and I don't think the power constraints of that of a stage would allow it. Um, but it's, it's all the same tools. There's no magic. There's no there's no uh, curtain man behind the curtain. I mean, there's, there's not going to even be Davey up front like you've always seen in the past, hacking away to make sure we don't lose network connection. This is this is live. <laughs> And real, um, and I encourage you to show up for that. Uh, and with that, sweet, I got time for questions. If you want to ask them, um, I'm done. Questions. If you have a question, I'm told you're supposed to come with that microphone, or I'll just repeat it. Yeah. Uh, you're running Swift and Ceph. Why? 
One is for, for we have one block storage. I mean, you th it, it's to mimic basically what we have in AWS, right? I mean, I, ob object storage, right? Yeah, object storage, block storage. That's one. Um, and hey, Ceph is cool. We like Ceph a lot. Um, uh, we're growing that, but uh, and Swift came with OverStack, so why not run it? Uh, but we we don't really choose which ones. I mean, and this I guess technically, if you're running Ceph in your cloud, it's not OpenStack, but we don't care. We're running in production. We need their stuff to work. So. tell you, you, you can ask Andrew, we, I haven't scaled our personnel at all. Um, but, uh, um, uh, it, it, it's, it's actually, I mean, if you have the right tools in place, it's, you, know, it's, you know, once the lab is up and running, you know, adding more hardware tip doesn't really add any, any problems. It, it's more about getting the first, getting it up and running, right? I mean, getting it all configured, understanding what you're doing. But once it's up and running, and you're just adding more servers in, if you have the space in your data center, it's okay. When you start, those are the constraints you do with more. I think power, data center stuff. Um, but you know, if this cloud had to grow by nodes, I don't think it, you know. I I know I would not scale the I T the I S team to do that. Um, we did have a bigger focus, I think, on web ops in a sense of training those guys up to understand how to use our tools and and so that they can help others deploy services in. But that's the, the beauty of a lot of, of you know the draw of the cloud and of service orchestration tools is that you don't have to, that, that, that tight coupling is, you're decoupling that, that, that way to grow, right? So you can grow your, your infrastructure without necessarily saying, okay, I gotta hire 20 more people or, you know, because quite honestly, that just doesn't work for me, budget-wise. Question. I can't see very well. I don't know, no custom chain. I mean, if we, if we, well, we have the luxury of those are our packages. So if we have to make a custom change, you benefit because we're going to push, we don't want to keep a separate, we don't want to keep a separate tree. We had to make charms, which are what Juju deploys. Initially, we had custom charms until our IS team got basically access to upload the charms back into the community. So, you know, and, and improving it, the thing as the Apache charm and, and making it more robust, more secure than just the vanilla one we had out there. But no. Any, any change, we, we would never keep a private change because it's the pro it, we're running our own product and so we would just push it on out. I mean, one thing is our tool Juju needs to be able to support what we call cross uh, environment relations. Um, I mean, I could stand up here and talk a lot about Juju, but uh, you know, the, the the ability to to have a service in you know this region and you know, connected to this one and have them seem seamless. You know, once we that that's that is a big one for us. I mean, the data center, the data center thing, we kind of solved that in terms of like the logistics because we you know we pay for a big fat you know data pipe between the two. Um, such that you know the archives in our like our OEM team in Boston doesn't have to wait forever. I mean, I know the folks in in Australia wish we had one down there, but uh, I think I think it's going to be more. Uh, if the, the, the infrastructure itself shouldn't know, right? I mean, it, the, the, I mean the networking is going to be a challenge. Quantum, you know, making sure that it's all on the same shared network, I think is going to be a challenge. Um, uh, storage, I mean. Do you have your Swift across that data center, or are you are you, you know, doing some some special magic over on top of that? Um, I think it's the same traditional challenges you have with and just with it with with having multiple data centers anyway. I mean, I think like I said, one of our I think our challenge is additional because we try to make it really easy and and transparent from a deployment standard. Um, but other than that, um, I don't know. It's not my problem though. I just tell my <laughs> now, the actual uh, your build cycle for Bumble is on right now, and I'm going to mention that that on the Rotary Cloud. Our build, your our actual build and test. Oh, our build and test. Uh, so I saw a launch pad, a lot of it. Um, 
Not yet. So when I said the PPA builders or the launchpad builders, we're, we're going to slowly transition those over. Um, right now, there's a sh right now for Ubuntu when you you know to have a PPAs, they're just shared machines in the lab that get randomly assigned. Um, Canonical does reserve us. We have a, our own internal ones, so we can always build Ubuntu no matter who's messing with PPAs. Sometimes we pull some out of those PPAs towards a release, so we can make sure that we get the release out. Um, but ideally, yeah, you know. It, there's no reason why you shouldn't be. Um, you know, it, it's it's just a matter of getting it done. I mean, there's a lot of old stuff that we have to undo, and it's just time and effort. Um, the, the fact that we release every six months, it makes it really hard for us to do long projects. When you know, as we get closer to the release, the IS team has to start gearing up, and you know, and keep, you know, moving things around, buying additional bandwidth so we can meet the demands. Of, you know, so it, you know. We're getting better at it. We, you know, we're redoing our, our, our IS team is kind of reorg to more of a squad approach where they can rotate a little faster. Um, but uh, eventually, yeah, I mean, we, it's you know, like you said, you know, it's all about dog feeding and practicing what you preach. Previous session, uh, a lot of speakers mentioned that DevOps, the challenge of implementing it uh, was cultural. Mm, yeah. Can you, can you? Yes, I can talk. Um, yeah, I mean, when we first started talking about Gigi, our guys were like, whatever, I'm using Puppet, I'm not trying to, you know, ops never want to change. I wouldn't want to either. I mean, hell, you know, it's, it's you know, when you're, when you're an ops, if, if any downtime is bad. So if, it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Um, <laughs> um, uh, now, and then our developers are always on the cutting edge. They just want to, come on, man, it's, it'll work, don't worry about it. You know, so I think... Honestly, and it's, it's as weird as it sounds, like when we merged the organizations, it kind of broke down some barriers because it wasn't us and them. That does help, you know, to be honest. And we have, and when we have uh, development sprints, um, we include IS. They're there. They're, they provide input. Um, they, they provide input into design and development. They're included, so they feel more, they're not, they're not, they accept it more. You know, they're not as scared of it if they were involved in helping to design it. I think making sure that IS is just, the doers, but also involved in the planning of, of, the, of the technology, that helps a lot as well. Um, and I'll say, look, you know, because of our company, a lot of our IS guys are developers, so you know, some of our ex -de our Debian guy. I mean, so they, they, I don't know if they're your traditional ops. I don't know what that what it really means, but at least within our company, they're more minimal to you know developers than maybe you know your bigger companies. But again, it was initially very hard, you know, very a lot of pushback, a lot of. You know, we're not going to do it, or this is crap, or I can't believe you're making me do this, you know. Um, <laughs> it just takes time, but I think, you know, if you start breaking down those barriers, you know, um, and really having the teams work together and, and feel like they're all one team, and they, and they all have, that ops knows that if there's a problem, development's not going to push them away, that helps a lot. Sorry. Man. Question. Um, well, we all yeah, we have a single RT system for our various okay. things, but uh, I, I, you know, I'd be lying if I said, oh, our tickets have gone down and it's been magical. No, <laughs> I mean, and and you know, the RT system is still, it's still like beneficial to know somebody to get your RT responded to a little faster, or jump in the IRC channel and be like, hey, what the hell is going on? Ticket four seventy five. Um, but it, but it, but at the same time, I think developers feel a little more empowered to get some things done. Ironically, though, because you give them a little power, then they want more power. It's like, well, why can't I do this too? Why can't I do this? Like, well, let's slow down, you know? Because you know? then you turn around and have someone, again, deploy a DNS on a public damn <laughs> <laughs> That just happened. Like, <laughs> am I out of time? Yeah. All right, I've been giving the wrap-up symbol, so I'm wrapping it up. But you can email me. Robbie at canonical.com, Robbie at Ubuntu.com, same thing, same email. I'm an Ubuntu member. I earned it. I didn't just get, get it. Um, yeah, if you have questions, feel free to email me. Um, thanks. Thank